Scripture. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. We don't watch out. We instead of trusting in the Lord, we want to trust in our own judgment and everything. And uh, I just thank God that He that He has uh, given us a way through prayer and through Jesus that that we can lean on Him and He'll instruct us in the right way. Yeah. Boy, isn't that the truth? Amen. Amen. God is so good to us today as we. Uh, Looking into the Word of God this morning, be much in prayer for uh, this lesson here today. Uh, over here in the book of Acts, we're going to just continue on right there. In Acts chapter 13, we're going to read verse 24, 25, and 26, I believe. Uh, let's have the Lord to have us to go today on this. We're just eating along, taking our time looking at the Word of God uh, today. and. As we look at this here uh, in verse uh, 24, the Word of God says, when John, as, as we see in, uh, in verse 23, talked about the, the promise of the Savior and, and kind of gives an update before we get started. Uh, as we see here, uh, uh, Paul uh, here, they come, him and Barnabas, and they come into the synagogue and uh, they've uh, stood up and they've read the law and the prophet, looked to the prophets, and, and they asked uh, if anybody there had any word of good exhortation for the people, uh, uh, they had the opportunity to stand, and Paul, he said, I'm glad you asked, but he stood up, and he's taking them and giving them a little bit of a history lesson here, as we see here. Those uh, Jews that are there in the synagogue, there's a lot of Gentiles there, those that fear God, he says in verse 23, uh, we see, but we realize today that uh, of what he's saying here, but continuing on here in verse 24, he says, when John had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John fulfilled his course, he said, Whom think ye that I am? I am not he, but behold, uh, uh, there cometh one after me, whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to loose. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you uh, feareth God, to you is this word of this salvation sent. As we look at this here, uh, he said, to you is this word of salvation sent. We know today that there's uh, salvation in none other but the Lord Jesus Christ today. But I'm going to back up here in verse 24. And there's one word here that I want to look at real closely today. And that word is repentance. We look at this word here and I ask the question today, what is repentance? <coughs> it's turning away from sin. It's not just being sorry for your sins, but it is turning. If I'm going one way, Charlie, and I turn, I go the other way of my family. Repentance is turning away from sin turning back to God or turning to God uh, by faith and believing upon the Lord Jesus Christ. But today as we look at this, it's a change of mind, my friend, today that results in a change of heart and a change of conduct. Repentance is a term, my friend, this morning. Uh, it's a change of attitude regarding God and sin as we look at that today. My friend, today, uh, as we see here, true repentance uh, is godly sorrow for sin. I mean, I was looking at that. Uh, uh, we see here today, uh, uh, my friend, today we have so many, I guess you could say, shallow conversions. Uh, people say, yes, I believe in God, uh, but my friend, they don't bring forth fruits meet for repentance. Uh, I don't see no change in their life, in their lifestyle. They say, yeah, I believe in God, but you watch them and they're still out in their sins. They don't turn from their sins. So that tells me that they did not repent of their sins. It's good, brother. I mean, it's simple to look at. My friend, a chain of repentance is turning, uh, uh, my friend, from sin, turning and going in the other direction, going toward God, going with God. Uh, uh, my friend, this morning, if we look at that, one of the greatest examples, turn to Psalms, uh, uh, my friend, over to Isaiah, uh, or Psalms 51. Excuse me, let me get here real quickly. 
As we look at this here, one of the, the greatest, uh, as we see here, uh, 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 examples that we have of a repentant heart here is uh, the King David as we look at this here. Uh, I want you to listen to this, my friend, this morning. Repentance is more than being sorry for your sin. It's turning away from sin. As David, and we'll look here a little bit farther over Samuel, are talking about this, but we see here David, he's crying. He says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Uh, wash me thoroughly from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. Uh, my friend, I see a repentant heart. I see one that's a turning. Uh, he's more than just sorry for his sins. Uh, he's turned back to God. Uh, for I acknowledge, listen to this, for I acknowledge my transgressions uh, and my sin is ever before me. Uh, a good example of a repentant heart. Uh, I see over in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, we've heard that verse. He said, If my people which are called by my name uh, shall humble themselves and pray uh, and seek my face and listen to it, and turn from their wicked way, turn from sin, repent from sin. Uh, my friend, this morning as we look at this year, uh, for I acknowledge my transgressions. Uh, my friend today, against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and clear when thou, ju thou judgest. Uh, uh, listen, behold, I was shaken in iniquity, and I in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts and hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hot oil. Boy, I'll tell you what, uh, uh, my friend today, uh, what shall wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood as we see here. Uh, he said, purge me with hosses, I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than the stove. Make me to hear joy, uh, my friend, and gladness uh, that thy bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Creating me a clean heart, uh, O God, and renewing me a right spirit. Uh, cast me not away uh, from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Uh, boy, I tell you what, we see what happens when God uh, he hears that repentant heart crying out to Him, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and behold me with thy free spirit. Uh, boy, I tell you what, uh, a plea for forgiveness, uh, a plea and a turn. As we see here, a repentant heart, my friend, today. But as we look at that here today, how a great a man uh, King David was, uh, but yet he was not without sin. Uh, we, we tell, uh, uh, we look at, excuse me, we look in Romans three twenty three says, "For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God." We all need a Savior, my friend. Today we all need to be uh, in that place uh, uh, that we could walk with the Lord, uh, my friend. Today, but we see that sin separates this morning, and we have to have a way uh, back to God. That's why Christ Jesus came uh, to seek and to save sinners. Uh, my friend, this morning, as we look at this here, if people today, you think about it, would look at their own sin through the mirror of God's Word. People today, they they want to look at somebody else. They want to hear from somebody else uh, about their sin or, or their sin's all right or it'll be all right. But my friend, they need to look at the mirror of their sin and the mirror of the Word of God. Uh, it'll bring you guilty. It'll show you what to do. Uh, uh, my friend, it'll show you the right way. Uh, my friend, if they would look at it that way and have a repentant heart and turn back to God, God's house would be full of people desiring to worship Him this morning. Amen. My friend, as we see here today, uh, uh, people say, yes, uh, I've been saved, yes, I believe in God, but their lifestyle, uh, it rejects the, the, what they're saying. Uh, I look at them, Charlie, I'm not to judge. I don't want to judge. I can't judge them, but I do see their fruit. Uh, I do see what's going on in their life. If they've never turned from their sins, uh, if they've not turned from their wicked ways, uh, my friend, I'd say they've not repented of their sin. It's just simple and true. Uh, the mirror of God's Word will show us today where we stand, uh, my friend, today uh, as we look at this here. What led David, my friend, to this point right here in Psalms 51 to repent of his sin? Uh, that was it. And my friend, it had been exposed uh, over here as we see here in 2 Samuel. Let me go over here in chapter 12. 
I'll read a couple of verses here. We've got a long way to go today. We're going to try to cover this for the help of the Lord today. We want to look at this here. Uh, the Lord sent Nathan, Nathan excuse me, unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one sheet. As we know right here, uh, uh, my friend of David, I uh, have uh, the death of Uriah, but, uh, how that David had sinned, and how he had Uriah sent to the heat of the battle and killed, and all this to cover up his sin. Thought he had it hid. Uh, my friend, you may think you've got your sin hid, uh, but there's one in heaven that knows all about it. Uh, uh, my friend, this morning, you may have it hid from the pastor, you may have it hid from me and your family, my friend, but God knows all about it, uh, and He will expose that sin, uh, uh, my friend, to you. Uh, and He came unto him and said to him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceedingly many flocks and herds, uh, but the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb which he had brought up and nourished up and it grew up together with him and his children. It did eat of his own meat uh, and drink of his own cup and lay on his bosom and was unto him as a daughter. I mean, we see the illustration he's given and there came a traveler to the rich man and he spake to his own, uh, uh, he aspired to take one of his own flock and of his own herd to dress it for the wayfaring man that was coming to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was coming to him. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die. Boys, he's looking at this, and he shall surely restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. And Nathan said unto David, Thou art the man. God will expose your sin, uh, uh, my friend, uh, uh, to you. Uh, my friend today, uh, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. Uh, boy, the goodness of God over in Romans. Let's just go over there uh, in chapter 2 this morning. Uh, and look at this here today. Uh, as we see here today, he tells us uh, here what the, the goodness of God is. Uh, my friend today, he told David, uh, God, I mean, God has been good to David. God's been good to us this morning. Now, as we look at this here, uh, my friend, this morning here in chapter 2, but in verse 1 of the book of Romans, it says, Therefore, thou art inexcusable, old man, as we see all these ungodly things. Just, uh, chapter 1 has been exposed. Uh, Patrick preached about it the other day. We see all these things, but it says right there, thou, uh, Therefore, thou art inexcusable, old man, whosoever thou art that judges, uh, for wherein thou judgest another, but condemnest thyself, for thou shalt judge uh, that. For thou that judges does the same thing, but we are sure, and that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which have committed such things. Uh, and thinkest thou this, O man, that judges them which do such things and does the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? My friend, today uh, uh, we're awful easy uh, uh, this morning, Charlie, to look and point out somebody else's sin this morning uh, and not point out our own this morning. Uh, my friend, God will judge all uh, uh, this morning. He sees all or despises thou the riches of His goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance, uh, as we see right here, uh, my friend, this morning, as Paul was writing that down, uh, God, listen to that, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repent. Boy, he's been good to us today, uh, but after the hardness uh, and in, in uh, impenneth heart uh, treasures up thyself wrath against the day of wrath of revelation of the righteousness judgment of God uh, that word right there uh, impenneth uh, it, it means not repenting of sin uh, my friend not contrite uh, without regret shame or remorse uh, uh, my friend this morning uh, as we look at this world today uh, my friend today we look over here uh, in Second Peter I'm going to go over here in chapter 3 uh, and read a couple of verses here this morning uh, as we look at this year, my friend today, what the Lord's saying about this word repentance, uh, uh, my friend, what the word of God says about that this morning, over here in chapter 3, uh, my friend today, uh, as we see here in 2 Peter, he says in the second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, uh, uh, my friends, he's right to these persecuted saints, uh, uh, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles, of the 
Lord and Savior of my friend, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. Uh, we thank this morning. Uh, I thank this morning. Uh, why repent the question? People say, why should I repent? Well, there's a day of judgment of coming, my friend. There's a day, uh, uh, my friend, if we don't repent of our sins, uh, we'll lift our eyes in hell one day after a while. Uh, uh, that was created for Satan and his angels. Uh, my friend, but we look right here and saying, where is it? the promise of his coming? Uh, uh, for since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Uh, for this they willingly are ignorant of that the word, that, or excuse me, by, by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water whereby the world then uh, was being overflowed with water perished. Uh, why did it do that? Uh, uh, because of sin, because of unrepentant hearts. My friend, this morning God destroyed her as we see here today. Uh, he goes on, but the heavens and the earth uh, which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved in the fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, uh, be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. Uh, uh, but right here, the Lord is not slack concerning His promises, my friend, this morning. As some men count slackness, but it's long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but what? That all should come to repentance, my friend, this morning. That all should come to that today as we look at that here this morning. But my friend, today as we go on uh, and we look at this here, uh, uh, my friend today, uh, let's just see what Jesus says about Go back over here to Matthew uh, in chapter 9. I'm going to read a few verses in, and then we're going to get into the message this morning uh, as we look at this here in Matthew chapter 9. Uh, uh, we see here to my friend this morning, uh, uh, my friend Jesus gave us some examples. He was, Jesus gave us some words uh, uh, as we look at this here. Uh, uh, chapter 9, let me start. Let me just start verse 9. I'm going to read verse down to 13. Real quickly here. As Jesus passed forth from thence, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of customs, and he said unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. And it came to pass as Jesus sat at meat in the house, behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down uh, with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, why eateth your master with the publicans and sinners? Uh, boy, I tell you what, uh, there was indignation in their heart. Uh, they were self-righteous this morning. That's where uh, many people are today. Eddie, they're self-righteous. They think they're better than somebody else, my friend, today. Uh, my friend, but we're all created in the image of God. Uh, we're all sinners and we all need a Savior, my friend, today. But when Jesus heard that, He said unto them, that uh, they that be whole be not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that means. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Uh, uh, my friend, this morning, uh, as we look at that here today, uh, but go over here in the uh, third chapter of the book of Matthew, and let's just see uh, of what the Word of God says here, the message about repentance today. Uh, we're going to start over here in Matthew, we'll go on over through uh, uh, Acts and Corinthians over there, uh, by the Lord's help this morning, but I just want to see a few things here today. Uh, we'll talk about John the Baptist here. Uh, let's see how John came. Uh, my friend, this morning, uh, uh, my friend, the message of repentance Become, it come before the message of the Savior. John came preaching of the baptism of repentance, my friends, preparing people's hearts, preparing the way for the Lord, my friend, today. Uh, uh, my friend, today, before anybody can be saved, they're going to have to be some repentant hearts, uh, uh, my friend, today. More than just sorry for sin, my friend, today. Uh, uh, we look at this here in those days. Came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of of the prophet Isaiah, uh, saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Uh, and the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and leather girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Boy, you talk about a wild looking feather. I would say today, if John come walking in the doors back there, huh, oh, we probably wouldn't want to hear a word he said. We would probably want to push him out the door just because of his appearance. Huh? My friend, but we look at that here today. Then went out to him, Jerusalem, and all Judea, and all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Huh? But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, huh, who hath warned you huh, from the 
to, to, to flee from the wrath to come. Bring forth fruit, uh, bring forth meat for repentance uh, as we look at that evidence. Uh, my friend, if I see someone today, uh, and we see here today, uh, Eddie, my friend, uh, we look at this year, uh, and we see somebody that's come, uh, and they say they've truly repented, uh, but they don't turn from their sins. Uh, what repentance means is turning from their sin. Uh, turning to God, uh, my friend, today. He said, bring forth our fruits some evidence. There'll be evidence in your life that you have repented, you have returned or returned from your sins. There'll be evidence. You won't be going right back into the same mess tomorrow. Amen. Second Corinthians five seven says, "Any man being Christ, he's a new creature." I, I tell you what, when I got saved, uh, the next day I was different. When the people saw Gary the next day, that I was different. I didn't go back into those same waste places I've been. I didn't do the same things I've done. I repented of my I had turned from my sinful lifestyle and turned to the Lord Jesus by faith, my friend today. <coughs> you think about that. Chapter 4. We see what John was saying. Verse 12. Now when Jesus had uh, heard that John was cast into prison and departed unto Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt uh, in Capernaum, which is uh, upon the uh, sea coast in the borders of Ze 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 Zebulon and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled which spoke by the prophet Isaiah, saying, uh, The land of Zebulon and the land of Naph <coughs> Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them who sat in the region of the shadow of death, light is sprung up. Uh, uh, my friend, from that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So we see here that John came preaching repentance. Uh, Jesus came preaching repentance, uh, as we see here. Going on real quickly, uh, go over here to Luke uh, as we look at this year, chapter 13, uh, my friend, this morning. Maybe. First one, chapter 5, real quick. So we, we might even read more than that. But we'll run out of time. But there were present at that season some of the told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Suppose ye that these gentle Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they uh, suffered such things. I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall likewise perish. Or excuse me, ye shall all likewise perish. Of this eighteen upon whom the tower of Siloam si 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 fell and slew them, think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwell in Jerusalem? I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Without repentance, my friend, there is no remission of sin. As we look at this year, I'm going to get a drink. I'm about to dry down. Get the lid up a bit. But this word repentance means to turn from your sin. Over here, look at chapter 15. Then drew near and took him all the publicans and sinners for a hearing. There was something about this man Jesus that this draw sinners to him. You think about it. He showed them love. He showed them compassion. He treated them as somebody. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, this man received the sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he findeth it? And when he hath found it, he left it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he hath come home, he called together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven. Listen to that. Joy shall be in heaven over one sinner, sinner that repenteth more than over the ninety and nine just persons which needeth no repentance. 
Boy, I tell you what, that they's rejoicing in heaven when one of uh, the repents of their sins and turns to God and trusts the Lord Jesus for their Savior. My friend, this morning, uh, as we see here, we just read another little parable. Either what woman hath having ten pieces of silver, if she loses one, a piece uh, does not light a candle and sweepeth the house and seeketh diligent till she find it. And when she hath found it, she called her friends and her neighbors together saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I have lost. Likewise, I say it to you, there shall be joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Uh, uh, my friend, this morning, uh, we see the message, uh, my friend, here today uh, of repentance, which we see. Uh, and you go on here to the next parable. Let me just read it here. We've got time. Uh, that's all God's time this morning. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger uh, of them said to his father, Father, give me the portions of good that befall me. And uh, divided it unto them his living as we see here, we're talking about this word repentance this morning. Uh, we see here today, uh, uh, my friend, there's joy in heaven with the angels over one sinner that repenteth. Uh, now we're looking here at the prodigal son. Uh, we see this son, and not many days after the younger gathered all, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, uh, there arose a mighty famine in the land and began to be in want. Uh, and he went and joined himself to a city citizen of the country, and he sent him to the field to feed the swine, and he would have fan, uh, would have fan, have filled uh, his belly with husk, he, the swine did eat, uh, and no man gave it to him, and when he came to himself, uh, boy, I tell you what, uh, I thank God uh, for the holy convicting power of the Holy Ghost this morning, uh, of my friend today, uh, he says, when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my father's house bread enough to eat? bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my Father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Uh, uh, you see how he put that there. He said, I've sinned against heaven, and then for the family or his father there, repented heart, my friend, this morning. That's, that's what he's thinking in his mind. I'm going to tell my father, and uh, and. I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and he came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran, fell on his neck and kissed him. Huh? My friend, God's just waiting for you to turn back. Huh? God's just waiting for you to call out to him with a repentant heart. Huh? Uh, my friend, sinned against heaven and against thee, he said right there. And his son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and no more worthy to be called thy son. But the Father, you think about that, uh, my friend, this morning. Thank God that uh, for forgiveness of sin, uh, uh, my friend, today. Uh, but the Father said to his servant, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his finger, shoes on his feet, some ownership showed forth there, uh, my friend, a child of the king, uh, and bring forth there the fatty calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry, for my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he is found. And they began to be Murray. Uh, my friend today, this message of repentance, uh, as we see John the Baptist preaching, as we see Jesus uh, preaching, let's look at Peter uh, preaching it over here in Acts chapter 2. Uh, my friend, this morning, uh, as we look at this here, uh, I'm going to start here probably in verse 37 uh, as we look at this here today. We see Peter's been addressing the crowd here in chapter 2. Uh, we see the first part of it, the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost fell uh, and it filled all of them up, my friend, this morning. Uh, and Peter began to preach. Uh, and now here in verse 37, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. Uh, my friend, today, uh, the Word of God is sharp. Uh, my friend, it'll pierce the heart. Uh, uh, my friend, it'll divide the sunder and so, uh, My friend, it'll get the job done. Uh, and I, uh, uh, Isaiah 55, uh, uh, God said that He'd send His Word forth, uh, my friend, and it would accomplish that where He had sent it. Uh, the Word of God, it'll get it done. Uh, it'll convict, my friend, this morning. It'll convince, my friend, uh, as we look at this here today. Uh, and they were pricked in their heart. They said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brother, what shall we do? Uh, boy, I'm glad to that. He said, then Peter said to them, Repent, uh, repent, uh, repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin, and you shall receive uh, the gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh, for this promise is unto you, to your children, and to all that are uh, that are far off, 
even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Uh, my friend today, if we look at this here, uh, and many other words, did they testify and exhort saying, Save thyself from this other generation, morally crooked, my friend, what that means. Uh, uh, then they uh, gladly received his word, were baptized, and the same day they were added unto uh, them about three thousand souls. Uh, what a message uh, of repentance that they heard that day. Uh, and they turned to the Lord Jesus. Uh, three thousand souls, uh, uh, my friend, this morning. Repent. Uh, we see the message that Peter was uh, preaching. Let's go up here to Acts chapter 20 uh, and look at some things that Paul was speaking here. Uh, my friend, this morning over here, Acts chapter 20, as we look at this here, uh, uh, my friend, today, uh, I want to look right here. Let me start in verse 16, read down through 21 here, real quickly. Where would we be? What's that word repentance mean? Verse 16. As we see here that, that uh, the, the, the bit of big uh, meet, revival meeting going on there that night in the house, and the young lad up in the second story or so, he would sleep, fell out the window. And, and the, we see here how he'd been brought back, and, and then Paul, he sailed on. He's called for the elders here. Uh, my friend here, uh, Ephes, uh, Ephesians, and we look here at verse 16, it continues on. For Paul had determined to sail by. Ephesus, because he would not sit, uh, not spend the time in Asia, for he hasted, if it were possible for him to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. And from Malchus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, You know, from the first day that I came unto you uh, unto Asia, excuse me, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons. Saying the Lord, uh, serving the Lord with all humility of mind, with many tears and temptations, which befell me by the lying in way of the Jews, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have shewed unto you, uh, and have taught you publicly from house to house. Uh, Paul to remind them what he's preached unto them, uh, my friend, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks. Repentance toward God. So I see here Paul's been preaching repentance too, my friend, this morning as we look at that here. Uh, he says right there, testifying both to the Jew and also to the Greek. Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Uh, as we see here, uh, uh, my friend, he's been preaching that. Uh, uh, we go over here in Acts chapter 26. Let's just go on over here and read a few more verses uh, as we see here. My friend, as we look at that here today, uh, in Acts chapter 26, uh, uh, my friend, let's see, uh, before I want, to, I want to start verse 12. As we see here, Paul, he's appeared, uh, uh, my friend, before King of Griffin here today. And he's going to give his testimony again. How's your testimony? Does it go back to a beginning place with a repentant heart? An obedient spirit? Word for, word on, as I went to the Baptist. Now you think about this. Paul here he is before King Agrippa finally. He's going to give his testimony. Lord, how as I went to Damascus with authority and commissions from the chief priest. At midday, O king, I saw in the way of light from heaven above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me and them that which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me, and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks of my friend. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Boy, I tell you what. Right here, as, as we look at Paul, we look at Saul of there in chapter 9. Uh, uh, my friend, he was the church's greatest enemy. But there on that road to Damascus, something happened that his life changed him forever. My friend, he said that he met the Lord Jesus. Uh, but rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose 
to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of the things which thou will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sin and inheritance amongst them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Boy, I tell you, boy, as we see here, we'll get into the, onto the sanctification all part of uh, uh, Paul's of preaching to those folks are in Acts chapter 13. Now, my friend, by the law, of, but we can get back to this right here. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them on Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea. As we see, every time Paul would go into a city, he would find that synagogue of the Jews first. He would preach to them. As we see here where he's at in Acts chapter 13 today, we see that a great multitude of Gentiles there also. We see how they talk in the next week's lesson. I ask him to come back and preach some way say words to him again. But we see here, he talked about how he went but showed first to them in Jerusalem throughout all the coast of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God. Uh, my friend today, uh, this word repent, it means something today, uh, uh, my friend, in someone's life. Uh, it should that uh, they should be a difference. They should be a turn from sin to God, my friend today. Uh, as we look at that here, that should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance, my friend today. They should, should be some evidence in someone's life that they have turned back from their sins, that they have turned back to God, uh, my friend, of the Lord Jesus for salvation today, as we look at that here, uh, my friend, this morning, uh, going on here real quickly as we look at this here, uh, let's just look over there, uh, my friend, this morning, uh, we see repentance, uh, let me go over here to 2 Corinthians, I'm going to read a verse over here, chapter 7, before we go on here, real quick, I want to read a few more verses here in, in, in chapter 26 of Acts, but here in 2 Corinthians 7, as we look at this year, bring forth fruits of uh, uh, thy forth that do works meet for repentance, as we see here. But over here in verse uh, 9, here in chapter 7, <coughs> second, it says, Now I rejoice, as we see here, my friend, uh, uh, we see here how, how that uh, uh, Paul has been talking about how to enjoy and all these tribulations and trials and things that come upon us, uh, as we see here. But let's look at here, godly sorrow. Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorrow but that you sorrow to repent. For you were made sorrow after a godly manner that you might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation not to be repented of. I tell you what, I fail God. Oh, how I fail Him miserably. But I tell you what, I've never regretted of being I've given my life to Him, repenting of my sins and turned to Him. I've never regretted that one minute of my life. The best thing that ever happened to me, my friend, for God the sorrow, work with repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. The sorrow of the world worketh death. I'm going over here to book of James and read you a couple of verses over here right now. Uh, as we look at this year, uh, uh, my friend, this morning, uh, the ways of the world are ways of death. My friend, today, uh, I hear people say, yes, I've been saved. Uh, yes, I believe in God. Uh, but they uh, uh, deny it by the works that they do. There's no evidence in their life. They've not turned from their sin. Uh, they're still right back where they are. Uh, from today, they went right back tomorrow where they're going. Uh, uh, we see back in those sins, uh, they never turn. They never repented. But yet they say, yes, I believe in God. <coughs> James chapter 2. Maybe verse 14 through 19. The Bible tells us in Hebrews, without faith, verse uh, 6 or chapter 11, without faith it's impossible to please God. They that come to God must believe that He is, and He's rewarded them that diligently seek Him. But here in James, and this is not contradicting one another, but what He's saying here, uh, my friend, faith always have a, has a company, my friend, today. It's never alone. When I got saved, I wanted to do something. 
I want to say something. I want to tell somebody else about the Lord. My friend David, right here. What does it profit, uh, uh, my brother? Though a man say that he hath faith and have not works, can faith save him? And we know the day that by, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, now, we're saved by grace through faith, that not ourselves, it's a gift to God. Not works, that's the image of both. But we see faith is never alone. But as we see here, but this is I'm down here in verse 19, is the point we're going to get to. Uh, if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say to them, Depart in peace, be ye warm and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? What good is that? Uh, uh, we see, so faith, if it have not worked, it's dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, uh, say that I have faith, and I have work, show me thy faith without works, and I'll show you thy faith by my works. But listen to verse 19, he says right here, uh, Thou believest that there is one God, there do as well. Even the devils also believe and tremble. My friend, this morning, without repentance, without returning, without turning from sin, my friend, this morning, you're in trouble. My friend today, he goes on there. Uh, boy, I'll tell you what, we uh, run out of time. Let's move up. Come on out. I'm going to read just a couple more verses in that Acts chapter 26. Uh, as we see here, Paul can tell and learn verse 20. Uh, how did he show you first? Uh, see him first to Damascus and to Jerusalem throughout all the coast of Judea and then to the Gentiles. But they should repent. King of Griffiths is listening to all of this. He's listening to this message. He's listening to all the testimony. Uh, my friend, for this cause, the Jews called him in the temple and went about to kill him. Having therefore obtained help, I continue to this day witnessing both the small and the great, saying more than other things than those of the prophets. And most of say shall come that Christ should suffer, that he should be the first that should rise from the dead, that should shine light into the people and to the Gentiles. Thank Todd this morning for that light. Uh, and we, listen to this right here. I'm going to read this real quick. Come on out. Uh, and as he uh, thus spake for himself, Festus uh, said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself, much learner doth make thee mad. But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness for the king knoweth of these things which before as I spake freely for I am persuaded that none of these things were given from him for this thing was not done in a corner it was openly it was publicly King Agrippa believest thou the prophets I know that thou believest uh, uh, we just read over there James uh, even the devils believe and tremble my friend this morning uh, then King Agrippa said to Paul almost persuadest thou me to be a Christian uh, boy that close uh, that close uh, right here. Uh, that's the difference between heaven and hell, my friend, this morning. From back about, about 18 inches, uh, I'd say, or 16. Uh, boy, I tell you what, uh, we need to look at this message uh, that the Lord asked for us today. Uh, turn from sin, turn from our wicked ways, and turn to the Lord Jesus for salvation.